Live from Las Vegas, it's theCUBE. Covering Adobe Summit 2019. Brought to you by Adobe. Welcome back everyone, live CUBE coverage here in Las Vegas for Adobe Summit 2019. I'm John Furrier with Jeff Frick. Two days of wall-to-wall -wall coverage. Our next guest is Josh Van Tonder, Group Product Marketing Manager at Adobe. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, for pleasure so being here. So you're managing the marketing of the products of Experience Manager within the platform. Um, great event here, really the keynote. We gave a great, a good, view, good review this morning. It's a great platform, a lot of elements to it. Journey, it's the holy grail. That's I mean, super interesting. I mean, and I mean for I think the first time, you can see the holy grail. You know, it's, it's just great actually hearing from the customers, right? I think it comes to life when you hear the stories they're telling, kind of the solutions they're bringing to market on top of it. It's, it's, it's very uh, exhilarating for the product teams to see it all in action and coming to life through the customers. You know, we cover hundreds of events a year. We, we hear all the stories. Everyone talks about innovation. It's really happening here. It's Adobe's transformed to cloud years ago. Mm -hmm. So now you start to see Marketo, Magento come into the mix, full platform architecture. Um, open APIs, open data. This is the beginning of a sea change we're starting to see in customers having the end-to-end -end experience where each functional element can do its job and connect with the data. This is progressive, I mean. Not it's great stuff. It's great stuff, so, so where, where are we? What's going on with the product? Um, what's, what's going on? How, how are customers dealing with this? Because you got Best Buy up there, 40 million emails personalized? Yep. Personalization at scale? Yep. I mean, I think the, the, the crux of what's going on is I think a lot of the organizations, I mean, essentially the, the name of the game is delivering personalized experiences, right? I mean, how do you, how do you get someone to have that moment, that moment of truth where they, they get to see and interact with the brand um, in a way that's relevant to them, right? I mean, I think we all, we all respond that way. I think, you know, even stati the statistics show that, our own statistics show that, so we've done some surveys of, of the consumers, um, it's 51% uh, say I'm much more likely to buy something from a brand if it's personalized, and 49% are going to say, look, uh, I'm going to be more loyal to you because it is relevant to me, which makes sense. I think you and I would probably agree with that if it's if it's the nail on the head. I want to bring up a point that the, in the keynote, the CEO said, he said, people don't buy products, they buy experiences. Okay, and this has now kind of become the, the kind of the, the, the mission of all companies is seeing a big trend with direct-to-consumer yep. in all verticals, not just B to B to C, direct-to-consumer. So now companies can go direct-to-the-consumer. So how does that change like the IT equation? Because the old days were, you know, build stack and rack servers, load some software, yep. sell it to a customer, but now you're dealing with a, a user experience model that's everywhere. Mobile yeah, it's an interesting devices. one. I mean, I, the crux of the issue is, uh, under the, underneath that, is it takes content and data together to kind of deliver the great experience. And, and at the end of the day, IT is front and center as the enabler strategically for how that gets delivered. Um, I think what we've been seeing is there, there's sort of, I would say, four key pillars, elements that, that they've been using to turn their portfolio to be a strategic advantage. So one is, um, how do you manage uh, omni-channel, right? I mean, it's, a guess, it's getting further with your message, so it's, it, that's essentially an omni-channel thing. The other is being faster about getting to market with that message. So, you know, maybe how does cloud play into that? How does um, how do you enable the marketing teams? And then I think the last thing, and this is this is one that's been a hot topic, is where does where does AI simultaneously help um, drive that better experience? So I, I think those are sort of the pieces we're seeing coming into play from an IT standpoint, where they, they have a lot, of, a lot of influence to advance the overall business mission. You know, Jeff and I were talking about uh, our intro, about how the cloud has really in changed the game with Adobe and the customer base. You know, the old cloud conversations around DevOps and, and around building applications were waterfall processes are going to be dismantled by agility-based processes. You're starting to see that now with content and creative, yep. where agility and speed and data are now the new thing. So a content developer is kind of like a software developer. If, when what cloud was weapon. for software, you guys are providing cloud type capabilities for content developers or yeah. creative developers. That's Same right. Same kind of metaphor there. I mean, what's how do you view that? How do customers react to that? That's yeah, interesting. I mean, I think you you know you sort of you bring up the one side is cloud agility, and the corollary to that is just overall content velocity, if you will, right? So I think. From a cloud standpoint, the, the model would be, you know, how do I 
how do I get to market faster in, in more geographies? How do I get to more geographies? How do I, uh, you know, support rolling out new infrastructure or new products more more quickly on the cloud infrastructure? Um, and then, how do I deal with growth, right? How do I, I scale my system? If you look at it from the content lens, which I think is what you're getting at, um, there's a similar paradigm in terms of this agility. So, uh, from an IT standpoint, how do you enable someone that's on the marketing team to discover their content, to reuse it more effectively, and then deploy it more effectively. And there are many pieces to the IT equation that fundamentally empower, if you will, that, that velocity um, in, in terms of being able to manage, discover, and, and frankly optimize that content as you get it out there. Um, so it's, it's an interesting thing that I think we've been doing a lot of um, looking at a lot of product innovation, specifically from an Adobe standpoint, in terms of actually enabling that, that product velocity. Which I mean, the platform out there basically is the architecture for the platform to do that. Yes, I mean, exactly. You guys have the elements. So is it just a perfect storm that's come together finally in terms of capability? Because we've talked about 360 view of the customer ad nauseum, mm -hmm. and, and we've talked about omni-channel for many, many, many years. But I think the execution on those was, was, was certainly lagging behind the vision. But is it now because of the integration of the platform? Is it because the big data architectures? Is it because now you know, it's, it's, it's you're reading real-time data on ingest, you're not going back to historical data? What is it that's now enabling us to actually execute on the vision that we've been talking about for years? Yeah, I mean, I think there, there are multiple pieces kind of coming together that are, that are helping. So I, I think, you know, as you said, I think in some sense what you're getting at is there, there were uh, historically many silos of how these things have historically been managed and what we're seeing is, is a trend towards centralizing that information because ultimately you can drive more insights by looking at it and it, it's just, you get more velocity for, for reusing it. So, um, you know, to look at it from, let's just take a, an example um, of the, the omni-channel. So if we look at it purely from delivering content, what we, as say uh, an IoT device comes to market or you have these more advanced um, single page apps on the web page uh, or an Alexa, right? What we saw is, is a rise of separate systems in some sense to manage those. But now we're seeing a trend where, gosh, if we were to have all of that content in one place, if we had all the analytics behind that in one place, we can more effectively personalize the customer journey across each of those. And that's effectively what you're hearing a lot of today is can I have sort of a, a, a centralized but hybrid model that supports through APIs getting that information to different touch points, and then the data engine that'll allow the personalization across each of that, those touch points. And that I think is, is the fundamentally the part that's unlocking a lot of value. Um, and is it the acceptance of the, of the AI and, and kind of the, the machine learning that's going to help you do it? Because you can't, you can't create 40 million emails with yeah. people, right? I mean, you have to have automation and you have to have some intelligence behind that. You just can't do it manually. So is that where we finally kind of broken through so that I can send 40 million different emails in one campaign with some intelligence and some logic behind who got what? Yeah, I think you hit the nail on the head there, right? I mean, I think if, if personalization is the name of the game and you're interacting on more touch points with more pieces of content, how do you get it right for each audience? And so that's where AI is, it's just adds tremendous a tremendous uh, velocity and help for businesses to get that right. So I think you can think of it almost as this pipeline to deliver the experience. So on one hand, how do you create that experience? AI can play a role. How do you manage it internally? AI can play a role in terms of discovering the assets and reusing it. Delivering it, it can play a role in actually getting the right content out there. And I'll give you some examples of that in a second. But uh, And then the final piece is it, as, you know, the actual optimization of that, right? So to give you some examples, what we've seen um, happening is you can literally use the, the AI, the, the, the data on interactions of how people are interacting across your system and actually create interfaces on the fly for specific segments of audiences, right? So instead of say, I as a marketer creating that interface, you know, using web development or, or tooling, why not have the system actually recompose what is being served up, you know, maybe a certain layout with multiple columns works for some audiences, maybe it just needs to be one banner with a certain time of image. AI can actually do that for you by looking at the analytics of, you know, 
how do you react to certain things versus me, and drawing corollaries. So there's a lot of places along that chain where AI is really And the really impact crucial. is productivity, obviously, because you don't have to write the queries or figure out what's coming in that's presented to you. That's kind, of, that's kind of the impact of the marketer, right? It's about, yeah, it's about scaling the marketer, right? I mean, I think that's one of the big challenges from a business standpoint is, you know, your team's never big enough to serve every person, every single customer as a marketer. So that's where AI essentially unlocks that, that scale. It, it gives you, a marketing team of thousands where you may only have a team of 100 or 20, depending on the size of the organization. How hard is it to tune that up in terms of a customer? If I'm, I've got a, I'm, I'm, Adobe, I'm an Adobe customer, I go to the Adobe Cloud, Experience Cloud. How do I tune this up? I mean, is there a way that you guys have figured out that allows them to kind of get it up and running fast without a lot of complexity? Yeah, that's a, that's a good question. It's, I mean, that's actually, it's really critical because from a marketing standpoint, you know, IT can bring to bear a number of different technologies, but unless they're easy to adopt, um, you're not going to go anywhere. So I think the trick is almost giving marketers the easy button. So I think that's, that's where a lot of the magic in AI happens, is you pick one specific problem. Um, it, you know, in Adobe's case, we, we pick a problem where we know we have a lot of intelligence about creative assets, and we have visibility in how those are being used. So if we bring those together, we can solve specific problems about discovering content or, or how we deliver that optimally. But the, to answer your specific question, it's almost as though we try to give an easy button for the marketer, right? So I feed you a bunch of, say, audience segments, um, I, and then I plug you into my, my analytics data, press a button, and I, it, ideally it's going to just figure it out for me, right? And, and, and then test if it works. That's the key, key thing is once you get in the market, test it, right. and, and it can do that for you. And I don't think there's enough, you know, kind of highlight on that where, you know, it was dramatic before to do A-B testing, now you can test, Everything. you know, at such scale, it's such detail, and to your point, you think you know your segments, and you can create your own segments, but you can actually let the machine create segments based on actual behavior of people, which I guess really is enabled by most, you know, so many of your interactions now with brands, uh, is digital, so it gives yep. you that opportunity to grab a piece of that exhaust, do the analytics, and get some insight out of it. Yeah, that's exactly right. I mean, I, it, you know, data, the scale of data, I mean, it, everybody's flooded with data right now, but it, it's really, where's the needle in the haystack? And I think that's, that's where AI plays a, a crucial role. I mean, it, uh, it can do things like figure out anomalies on, on your interactions across a large swath of users, right? If, if something, something you see in the data, is it statistically normal or not? And should I pay attention to it? And what should I do from it? So AI starts to play a role in that. Um, it can even do simple things like, uh, we all have mobile phones. We all want to watch more video on mobile phones. The problem is as a, a business, as a marketing team, and, and I'm sure even you, know, you folks uh, have the same situation, is the content that you create may not be ready to be consumed appropriately on each device, right? So if I pick up a mobile device, has it been optimized? Yeah properly. So you can do things like have AI pick the focal points in a video and crop out the rest and follow the focal point and only show that on the phone. So well, we're certainly going to call you up because we have a lot of video. We're doing <laughs> 20 videos here today. So a lot of, but this is the norm. People are going to have more velocity of videos, that's, the, that's the podcasts, yep. blog posts. So the waterfall, as I was getting earlier, this waterfall thing is over. It's more of an agile environment. So I got to ask you the, the, the customer question, is that reality yet grounded in the customer base or is it still early adopters? Or I guess the question is, what's the pattern that you're seeing in customer environment? What makes a good marketer, or what makes a good organization to embrace the kind of change that's on our doorstep right now? It's a good, that's a good question. And it, I think it takes two to tango. Uh, I think there's a, an IT element and a marketing element and I, I think we're seeing an evolution in how how the two work together in this new model. So from a, an IT standpoint, they are the enabler, for example, to get content onto multiple, multiple different channels. From a, um, from a marketer standpoint, they ultimately are the ones that define and help articulate the right message and type of content. If IT and marketers are working well together, um, the, mar the, the IT team is going to enable that marketer team, marketing team to yeah. essentially iterate quickly in content. So there's a whole set of things that can be done to enable um, the marketing team to be agile in getting that content out there. So I think, you know, 
the evolution, I would say, is is in in how the two teams have working. So I think your waterfall model in past, I wouldn't say it's entirely gone, yeah. but it, it has been well, reframed in a well, way that's, that's a great a lot point. More I mean, that's a good way to test to see if if IT and CM, the CIO and the CMO are working together. Yeah, they're probably aligned to for change. Right. If they're not, maybe not. Right. So I mean, I'll give you a very specific example. So one thing that we've been seeing in, in our world is so for example on cloud, you know, there's a lot of things you can do more quickly. Um, traditionally, there have been some waterfall development models. What we've seen is IT now has a, some, a DevOps process where they're very fast in rolling out application updates. Um, but if you can actually standardize that, if you can create a pipeline for cre getting code onto the, onto the different environments, if you yeah. test it and roll it out faster, what that means for marketing uh, and business is the time to market goes down. So for example, we've actually been baking that into our products. Can we literally, here's a best in class pipeline for doing an agile development model. It's already pre-built into the, the infrastructure to enable IT to kind of go faster on the behalf of So here's marketing. a question for you, put you on the spot. Sure. In all the major shifts, there's always gaps. Mm -hmm. There's always gaps in new markets or white spaces. So there's three areas, technology gaps, skills gaps, and culture gaps. Yep. Can you talk about what you see as the key gaps that people are starting to get over on, figure out how to fill those gaps? Because they can become sure. blockers if they're not resolved. So tech gap, skills sure. gap, and culture gap. So uh, just because we've been talking tech a lot, let's reverse it and, and, and talk um, you know, sort of the, the team and organization element. I mean, I think one thing that we've, we've definitely been seeing is, is um, if you will, the the alignment of what was traditionally channel management is now moving more closely into the, the CDO or CMO arm, which I think is, is a good thing, right? I think what we see as some of our leading uh, customers is th the marketing and, and chief digital officers have increasingly al more alignment um, and a seat at the table of how the individual channel line of businesses are operating. And that's a very good thing because it, it does help close the loop on the customer journey across those channels, which I think has traditionally been a bit of a, uh, a dilemma. So I would say that's one thing we're seeing much more is um, the, the channels, the channel management actually going under dir directly or more alignment with the marketing arm or something like a CDO. So on the org side, that's one area, and, and that helps with the velocity, right? And, and they're rearranging the org structures to align with how does content need to be shared across these teams. Do you really own that channel, or is it is it, do we do we have a customer journey that is owned across all channels, right? And I think that's an important conversation that these companies have been struggling with and are, are and have evolved a lot in the last few years. And we talked about the tech gap already, but skills gap. Mm -hmm. What skills are out there that are needed? Obviously, data, machine learning. Yeah. Um, so well, that's obviously a big one. Data, uh, the machine learning stuff. I mean, I think Adobe's. Uh, fuel horse on the races, I think we're trying to democratize some of that, so as I said earlier, yeah. the hope is for the marketing team, we we give them an e easy path to, to unlock that. Uh, there are areas where there's been big growth, like, um, so for example, the uh, front end uh, frameworks and development for single page applications. That's an area from an IT standpoint where we've seen yeah. tremendous growth uh, in that technology set and, and how that plays a role with the rest of the infrastructure. Um, yeah, and, and, and simply how does that actually align with the traditional tools they've been using for managing their websites. I think what, what we've seen is that they're now skill-wise and technology-wise actually taking a view that you, you still have one centralized yeah. platform, but ultimately uh, you'll have IT developer resources that plug into, say, one central hybrid uh, content management system, for example. Any new personas popping out of this, this shift that's going on with cloud and, and creativity, experience cloud? Any new roles that are emerging that you see popping out? Yeah, I mean, I th so, I mean, one example we've seen, and it, it's, it's, it's been an evolution, but, you know, for example, we've seen the, uh, the rise of something called journey managers, right? Which is, goes back to what I was mentioning earlier, which are, are people that, um, their business and tech uh, align, but they're, interested in understanding how, how does a customer actually move across a specific journey? So they're mapped to, if you will, a, a task a customer's trying to do, yeah. and how do I optimize that? You know, assuming and knowing that, um, you know, if Josh is going to 
try and get some customer support, he's not just always going to call the support line. He's going to try other things. And how do I simplify that for him? Uh, and taking a very holistic view. So I think that's that's one thing uh, we've seen more of, and it's it's a you know a great way to approach it. Fascinating insights, Josh. Thanks for coming on. I'll give you the final word. Put a plug in for what you're working on. Experience manager, what's new? What's happening? Yeah, absolutely. So we're uh, I'm part of the experience manager team. So we're uh, part of the organization that that helps our brands deliver and manage digital experiences. So. Essentially, we're enabling, if you will, omni-channel delivery and management of those experiences. Uh, and a key thrusts for us are around enabling IT to get content effectively across channels and also experience intelligence. How do we, how do we deliver AI and machine learning innovation to make the marketer's job easier for getting personalized experiences to market um, and enabling IT to support them more efficiently. So there's a number of innovations and exciting things that we're very excited about at Summit for that. Congratulations, Josh Van Tonder Group. Product Marketing Manager at Adobe, Experience Manager, his product, breaking down what's going on here at Adobe Summit and in the industry. I'm John Furrier, Jeff Frick. Stay with us for more coverage here at Adobe Summit after this short break.